My friends, I welcome you here to St. George Church as we offer our prayer on this St. Patrick's Day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Spirit. Just as St. Patrick was imbued with that missionary spirit, so we pray that we may be a people willing to share God's word and joy with all we meet. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the Bishop St. Patrick to preach your glory to the peoples of Ireland, grant through his merits and intercession that those who glory in the name of Christian may never cease to proclaim your wondrous deeds to all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of, of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of the drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torturous than all else is the human heart, beyond remedy, who can understand it? I, the Lord alone, Probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are they who hope, hope in the Lord. Lord. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed, Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed, Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed, Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the another world where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Lord. Happy St. Patty's Day to everyone. I had purple on before. Father says it's St. Patty's Day time. Got to wear white, so I had to go out and get my green on, too. <laughs> After a latest story, I remember when my father was still alive. He was 12 to 6 a.m. coordinator in the chapel for a long time. And when his health started failing, he uh, said, well, we got to get another person to, uh, to take over the 12 to 6 a.m. coordinator. We know how everything is organized with the chapel, and it just, don't ask me how it works. It just worked for over 25 years, 24-7. Every hour was accounted for. And he didn't, he, he was, man, I admired. He says, I don't worry about things like this. He said, God will provide. And Sure enough, it was just like it seems like as soon as God provided and someone stepped in, then his health started declining where it just was getting too difficult for him. He had the congestive heart failure, COPD, and all that. that it kind of kept him from being as energetic as he used to be. And so I kind of like listening to that story or reading that story because I'm sure there were times that things weren't easy, you know, how is this going to continue on? We hear in the story that, uh, you know, worrying about like the Jeremiah, he's talking about, uh, you know, people that are tortured and uh, how are we to, if we feel like we're kind of going dry and things like that, we need to focus our attention on that God is always constant. He's always there. I was explaining to my seventh graders yesterday that uh, God's a constant, you know. He's always right here. So I kind of had two fists up like that, one here and then another one here. It says like, and just remember, he's always there. And even though you might not notice him, you're here too. But it's when you separate yourselves and sometimes think he's not there and think that just like our first parents, Adam and Eve, thought that they knew better. And so it's at that point that we start moving away. And so you kind of give them those visual ways, you know, some of them they don't make it to church all the time. And, uh, you know, and it's just like this is another way that 
we continue to invite, we continue to pray, even though sometimes we feel like, is God really listening to us? Is it, it's just sometimes it's just too hard. You want the best for everyone, but sometimes in your own life, you feel like things just aren't going so well. This is the discipline of Lent, to never give up, to always know that God is right here. Because we never stand alone, and he always walks with us. And so let us continue this Lent as we continue on, that we'll go through this Lent knowing that Easter is coming, and we always have that renewed hope that we are never alone. We ask that the Lord will be attentive to the prayers that we offer. So we ask that God will bless us with that spirit that calls us to share his holy word and the joy he brings us. For the church. May our encounter with the God of hope during this Lenten season strengthen us in our mission, mission of spreading his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the counsel of the Holy Spirit be their guide as they act for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and for those who love and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the Holy Spirit manifest in us the gifts we need to do the will of God each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the angels carry them to new life with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Mass, Pat and Chuck Quinn, Dennis Clavish, Pat and Jack McGeehan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness, we ask that you hear the prayers that we offer. We praise and thank you for the goodness that St. Patrick bought, brought to the people of Ireland and the many missionaries that came from that country to spread your word. We ask you now, Lord, to bless us so that we may be a people of peace. We pray for the people of Ukraine and all troubled places in the world. We pray for the people of Japan who have suffered an earthquake. We pray for all those who are suffering around us. Help us, Lord, so that we can be messengers of your comfort. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. Almighty God, look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer on the feast of St. Patrick and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Patrick you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen us by the example of his holy life. Teach us by his words of preaching and keep us safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. George, St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, lays our bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite the folks who are watching at home now to take a moment and make an act of spiritual communion.
Let us pray. O Lord, by the power of this mystery, confirm your servants in the true faith, that we may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which St. Patrick never ceased to labor and for which he spent his whole life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day, everyone.